Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy endures forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two, the two door, doorpost and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until that morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Let us read select verses of Psalm 116 by half verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. You have freed me from my bonds. 
I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table and took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he had said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children... I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, 
Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. When I was working in the business world, one of the quips I heard most often, whether it was from my boss or from a customer, was, What have you done for me lately? Whatever I had done before was over and done with. Now the boss or the client was saying, yes, you did do that thing I wanted, but to stay on my good side, what's the next good thing that you're going to do for me? It's not surprising. Those for whom we work expect that we will continue to do good work, to offer more service, to be present, to solve their problems. It's the It's the way that our competitive economic system works. It's transactional. But it sometimes feels a little different, more like pressure to perform. So what makes the commandment that Jesus gives us in today's gospel feel so different? Love one another, he says. Just as I have loved you, love one another. It's a commandment, to be sure, but it feels qualitatively different. Why? Because as Jesus says, he has done it first. He has modeled for us what he expects of us. He has loved us deeply. And he expects that we will respond to that love, not just by loving him, but by paying it forward and loving others. This gospel story of the Last Supper, when Jesus turns upside down all of the social norms by going down and washing his disciples' feet. The master shouldn't do that for the followers, but he does and then leads them in the meal, even as he knows that one of the disciples will betray him, says, love one another. Love one another. It's such a simple phrase, and yet we find it so difficult to do. But let's remember who it is who says this phrase to us. This is the one who, though divine, is willing to get on his hands and knees to wash the dirty, dusty feet of his disciples, even though it scandalizes some of them, particularly Peter. It has been a fact of life in many of the parishes that I've been a part of. We actually did wash each other's feet. It's sort of funny, the number of freshly pedicured toes that I washed sometimes made me smile. Nobody wanted their feet to seem icky to the person who would end up washing their feet. But these disciples of Jesus had no pedicures. They were working class men who had tromped all over the place with their rabbi, and their feet were hard and calloused. Some might have had some sort of foot rot. Jesus got down, though, and washed those feet tenderly, 
even though that was a task that was normally done by servants, not by the host at the meal. What was Jesus doing? He was showing them what love looks like. They would soon see the great act of love that he did for them, for us all, when he died on the cross, for them and for us all. These two actions, washing the feet of the disciples and dying on the cross, were both the most extreme expressions of the kind of love called agape, love in action, visible love, not just a warm, fuzzy feeling, humbling himself in the most extreme way first at this last common meal, and then in his dying. He was showing us the way, the way of love, as our presiding bishop so often reminds us. To be a follower of Christ is to love, humbly, extravagantly, without judgment, without a second thought, as Jesus did. Because Jesus washes us and washes our souls all the time. Because Jesus loves us. Because Jesus gave us the sacrament of this precious shared meal because Jesus continues to encourage us and to love us to the end. That's what Jesus has done for us lately. So what have you done in the name of Jesus lately? What have you done for someone else? What will you do next? May this night be the start of a mission in your heart to love another in an active way. And may you be a blessing because of it. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, that the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Standing or kneeling, let us pray.
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, Susan Haynes, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. We especially pray for Joy, Roger, Guy, Brooke, Chris, Sydney, Texie, Nick, Sarah, Mary, Bill, Bob, Danny, Jim, Christine, Laura, Leslie, Bill, Bill, Ted, and Bill. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in the thought, word, and deed, for by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to stand so that we may share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other with words and signs of peace. brief announcements. I would remind you that there will be a service remembering Good Friday tomorrow at noon. There will be an Easter vigil service that starts at 7.30 at night at St. Paul's on Saturday evening. And we will have our Easter Sunday service at 10 o'clock here. Please do join us. We hope that you attend all of those services. You will be walking with Christ on his journey towards not just death, but resurrection. And it is a powerful one. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. 
an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. to give you thanks for you alone our Lord living and true dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand 
before you to serve you night and day and beholding the glory of your presence they offer you unceasing praise joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for all those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who was in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you. you. We, we bless you. you. We, we give, give thanks, thanks to you. you. And, and we, we pray, pray to you, Lord, Lord our God. 
Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
In thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us of living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And continuing with our prayer for the search process. Come, Holy Spirit, open our ears to hear your quiet whispers, our eyes to see clearly the challenges and possibilities before us, and our hearts in your loving presence. Guide us in this search process so that we may seek to do your will, bestow upon us the gifts we need to do the job that has been set before us. Hear our prayers, O Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. May he be with us and bring to us your blessing in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 